On Tech News Today, Apple wants to become your phone company and make Siri the operator. Plus, Facebook tries to out Snapchat Snapchat, and somebody finally bought Nokia's mapping service. It's all coming up next on Tech News Today. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Monday, August 3rd, 2015. This episode is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you all the ingredients to cook fresh, delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. And by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out where your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at gazelle.com. Tech News Today is the show where we talk about the tech news with the journalists who report it. My name is Mike Elgin. I want to welcome you to the show. And our co-anchor today is CNET.com Editor-in-Chief, Lindsay Turrentine. Hi, Lindsay. How the heck are you? I'm, uh, I'm great, Mike. I just got back from vacation. I made lanyards. You made it lanyards? Was, it was, I made lanyards. It was, the, it was like the real low-tech deal. So while I was suffering through the awful, awful, wet, hot American summer uh, premiere, you were actually at camp. Is that right? Was, you were out in the woods? I was actually at camp. In the woods, there was a dining hall. There was mediocre food. Um, there was canoeing. And, of course, this was California, so it was probably hot, and it was probably American, and it was definitely summer, but it wasn't wet, was it? It rained. <laughs> Did it, it rained really? on oh us. It rained. <laughs> yep, absolutely rained while I was on a canoe. Oh, and wow. it was warm. That's amazing. That is amazing. Yep. Well, uh, Lindsay, you know, something funny happened. We reported, uh, I don't know, a couple, three months ago that Twitter had announced that they were going to uh, sort of remove the 140 character limit for direct messages. And they were going to do it in July. Well, July came and went. And I checked this morning and they still didn't have the character limit removed. And so I went to check on the original post to see what they said exactly. And they put a little edit in there and said they changed July to August. So now we had previously reported. So I guess this is kind of like an update, kind of like a correction, kind of like a what the heck Twitter uh, to say that we had said that it would be by July, but now it's August and they're still working on it. So, you know, I, I think, you know, Twitter's trying to be a kinder, gentler partner for people who use the Twitter API. I bet, I bet a lot of developers aren't done getting this ready yet. And Twitter's given them a chance. I, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here. Yeah. And ultimately, it's not a big deal. It's like if you can't send long uh, direct messages, not, not the end of the world. <laughs> now, another thing that's a, a bigger deal is that when we did, when we live blabbed the, uh, the Microsoft announcement way back, I think it was January or something like that, when they were talking about HoloLens, uh, Nadella, uh, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, said that HoloLens would ship, quote, within the Windows 10 time frame. And there was a bit of a controversy at the time. I think most people thought that that meant that it would ship when Windows 10 shipped. And then, and I thought, no, I, I interpret that to mean that it would ship during the time when Windows 10 is the current version of Windows. Yeah, that's what I thought too, because HoloLens is incredibly ambitious. Yeah. And the demos still have been fairly limited. I, I it, That seemed crazy to me too. And didn't, N Nadella said that means within the next year, which I actually beats my expectations. Yeah, well, that's what he's saying now. I mean, they, you know, and so, yeah, that, that's exactly what he told the BBC. He said that... Uh, we will have a developer version of it first, and then will be more commercial use cases, and it will evolve. In other words, it's going to be one of those Microsoft soft rollouts that sort of roll out gradually. Uh, he said, this is the five-year journey, I guess, like the USS Enterprise. But we're looking forward to getting a V1 out, version one, which is more, uh, which is more around developers and enterprises. So what we had heard initially was it's going to come out with windows 10 then we said then we heard that windows 10 was going to roll out in pieces so first the desktop which has already come and gone and of course they shipped it last week and then later in the year it's going to be the phone version and the hololens version the xbox version and now we're hearing that the developers and enterprise partners will get it within a year so if you are a consumer hoping to be using hololens don't hold your breath because it's going to be a while it's going to be clearly more than a year and I'm sure that Microsoft is spending a ton of time looking for the partners who are going to create the most uh, compelling HoloLens content. 
And that can't be easy, right? Any sort of partnership that requires content development takes a lot of planning. Yeah, yeah, absolutely true. Well, why don't we jump into our top story? Apple is in talks to become a mobile virtual network operator, more commonly known as an MVNO, according to an exclusive on Business Insider. That means Apple would act like a mobile carrier, although the actual phone and data service would be provided by other companies like AT&T or Sprint or whatever. You'd pay Apple for your wireless bill, and you'd switch between partner carriers based on which has the best service in the area. This is kind of like what Google announced uh, very recently. Apple's MVNO would be available in the United States and Europe, according to the report. Such a service might not become available for years, the author of that piece said, up to five years, if at all. In related news, Business Insider also reported in a separate story that Apple plans to unveil a voicemail service that uses Siri to transcribe messages. Siri's voice would greet your callers, then Apple would transcribe the voice messages into text and then send you the text. The service would launch next year, according to the report. Uh, Lindsay, this makes a lot of sense. The second part makes a whole lot of sense uh, because, of course, people like to leave voicemail messages because it's easy but they don't want to deal with listening to a voice message because it's you feel like you're a prisoner of however long it is. They'd rather just glance at text. And so this is kind of the best of all possible worlds. And using Siri as the person who answers the phone makes a lot of sense too. This, yeah, it absolutely makes a lot of sense. It's all very um, Apple to want to keep everything in a single ecosystem. And even though in some ways we've heard about these features from Google Fi and Google Google Voice has a lot of the transcription. I can see Apple knitting it in in this very, very streamlined way to sort of make sure that you stay in that Apple universe no matter what and you use Apple Pay to pay your bill. That's right. And you just become sort of a, <laughs> it's just all right there. Yeah. More news coming right up, but first let's talk about delicious food that you prepare yourself. Blue Apron is one of our sponsors today and they will make your life awesome because what they're going to do is once you sign up, you're going to get two meals uh, in a box, or is it three? It's three meals in a box, three meals for two, unless you get the family plan in which you get a lot more. And you're going to be blown away by how fun and easy it is to prepare Blue Apron meals. Basically, you open it up and there's, you know, some vegetables and, you, you know, inside this box. And the, at the bottom, there's a refrigerated compartment. They use ice to keep the sort of meat and things like that very cold. It actually, I've actually left it in the box for a few days and it was still, the ice was still frozen and the, the, the all the stuff was cold. It's like a little refrigerator. You take it out and the, the ingredients they send you are exactly the ingredients you need. So there's no waste. You're not throwing food away, which is a huge problem these days. It's perfect for people who are super busy because you can put together one of these meals in about a half an hour, maybe 35 minutes, something like that, super quick. And they're not, they don't seem like simple meals. They seem elaborate. They seem like uh, a whole staff has slaved over these meals for a long time, but that's not the case at all. They're super easy uh, to prepare. Each meal is 500 to 700 calories per serving. And, uh, you know, they're pre-portioned ingredients, and this is just uh, a big time saver. You know, when you're, when you're doing uh, cooking without Blue Apron, there's a lot of time and mental energy required to go to the store, figure out what you need, then you have too much, what should I do with the rest? You know, how much do I need and so on? With this, you basically, they say, okay, chop the thing that we gave you and that's it. You just chop it and you're done. You move on to the next thing. Best thing of all though, I, I can't emphasize this enough. The meals are delicious. Every single meal that I've ever made with Blue Apron is really, really good. It came out perfect every single time. Blue Apron is a better way to cook. Check out this week's menu and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's right, two free meals just for going to blueapron.com slash twit. And we thank Blue Apron for their support of tech news today. Well, Facebook is testing a new feature called Live Events, which brings together Facebook posts and information about, you guessed it, live events. Carrie Flynn is a tech reporter for the International Business Times and joins us now. Welcome to the show, Carrie. Thank you, Mike. So glad you're here. Now, are they competing here with Snapchat's Live Stories feature, or are they competing with Twitter's upcoming Project Lightning? Are they competing with both? Who is Facebook trying to impress here? <laughs> I would say both. But what's interesting about Facebook is they're really pulling from the own their own content that's on the site. You'll see Facebook already has events, and they have accounts for... So this past weekend, they tried it for the music festival Lollapalooza. So there was an official Lollapalooza Facebook page, and there are artists who have their own accounts performing there and would post photos from the site. There are friends there, you know, and users who are posting content. So what Facebook did is pull all this content together in their own system. So very different from 
Snapchat where it's all user submitted and Snapchat creates a story based on it. This isn't really much of a story. It's more just like pulling together all this different information that was already part of Facebook. So Carrie, this reminds me a lot of, of what Facebook does when you check into a place and you actually get, you know, at least in the mobile app, you get a resulting page that shows which of your friends have been there and other photos taken in that place. Um, is this, a, does this go further than that type of collection? Is, is there a person, is there a human at Facebook uh, collecting the best posts from Lollapalooza in this case? Or is this going to be an algorithm driving this kind of collection? Yeah, from what I understand and what Facebook told the Wall Street Journal is the fact that this for now is just purely algorithm based. Unlike Snapchat, no human curation here, really just selecting what's emphasized already on the site. And like I said, so there it's really the vetted pages based on the verified accounts of artists and then just the users that you're friends with the other public accounts. So very easy algorithm change, nothing as curated as Snapchat does and perhaps what Twitter will be doing in the next year. Now, where would this be available to users? Would this be only in the mobile app? Where would they find this? It was on both the site and the mobile app over the weekend. On the mobile app, you saw it as a banner notification at the top. So very quickly, like easily accessible. You'd have to search for it on the site, but it's available both ways under what a section of the site on a banner called Facebook Places. Hmm, very, very interesting. Carrie Flynn is at ivtimes.com. I can follow her on Twitter at Carrie M. Flynn with two N's at the end. Carrie, thank you so much for joining us today on Tech News Today. Have a good day. All right, you too. AT&T's acquisition of DirecTV was approved only a week ago, and already AT&T is heavily promoting new plans made possible by the deal. Ed Begg is a tech columnist for USA Today and joins us to talk about it. Welcome to the show, Ed. Good to be with you, Mike. So glad you're here. Now, what's the promotion they're offering exactly? Well, basically, they're offering a promotion to new customers. I have to emphasize new customers, $200 a month. And it basically gets you high def and DVR service on up to four TVs. You're also getting unlimited, you know, talk and text on four wireless devices, phones, tablets. And on top of that, 10 gigs of shareable wireless data. So how... It, all of the video that you get to watch on the DirecTV app um, is separate from the satellite dish, something that can be made available immediately, or do you have to yes. be watching it through your satellite connection? No, actually, what one of the things that AT&T was promoting here is that the moment you sign up in a store, you'll be able to start watching on your phone and tablet right from the store through an app. Never mind that back home you have to wait for the dish and other gear to get installed. You can actually start watching right from right from your device right in the store. That sounds pretty compelling. It's like different from dish and other other yeah. satellite yeah, competitors. That, yeah, that is kind of interesting. So if you uh, you know sign up for NFL Sunday Ticket and I have to point out Sunday Ticket is not directly tied to this deal. But if you are a new customer, they're going to give you 12 months of that for free on, under certain plans. Uh, you can actually watch, you know, again, right in the store, right on your way home. And then you get home, put the, and the dish isn't there, and you can't watch on the TV, but that's a whole other matter. Which raises, the que yet. yeah, which raises the question, if they can stream into my phone, why can't they stream into my house? What do I need the dish for? Well, it's, it's a very good <laughs> question. Um, and actually, there's probably workarounds where you could watch it, but, uh, you know, at least for now, you're going to have to wait for the dish. So this is a this is a deal for defectors from other providers, as it is it from other cell providers or other well, they, video yeah, providers. They are, Either way, they are they are trying to also offer some sweeteners to lure lure you from the usual places, Verizon and T-Mobile and what have you. Um, but it is otherwise for new customers. And in fact, it's interesting since I posted my story, I've gotten mail from all these folks saying, "Hey, I've been on Directv for you know X number of years. I've been on AT and T." What about me? And uh, all I can say about that is uh, I suspect we'll, we'll hear from AT&T very soon about what they do intend to do for current customers. Um, I think they're going to be pretty aggressive. I mean, they're aggressive in the speed of coming out with this to say, hey, guess what? This deal makes some sense, and here's how we're going to exploit it and all of that. So uh, current customers have to wait, at least for now. Do you think this is a good deal, Ed? Personally, do you think this is something that will be compelling for people? Well, I, I think the first year savings are nice. 600 bucks is what AT&T is saying, up to $600. Um, 
A couple of things, though, to keep in mind. You do have to sign a contract, which not everybody's going to love here. Yeah. And that, that, as I understand, it's more on the TV side. Uh, direct TV people have to sign a two-year contract, although the the savings, this $200 a month plan, is only, only applies for the first year, after which it goes up to, quote, unquote, prevailing rates. Um, if you're on AT&T's, Uverse service, you only have to sign a one-year contract. So again, you know the first-year savings are nice, but you are making a commitment to AT&T and Directv, and you know people uh, people like the freedom to bail on these things. And if you do bail, you'll have to pay a uh, rather hefty uh, early termination fee. Hmm, sounds interesting. Ed Begg is at usatoday.com and on Twitter at Ed Begg. Begg spelled B-A-I-G. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ed. Anytime. All right. Autodesk is, is used uh, by some game developers to create and render 3D game spaces and objects. Now Autodesk plans to launch August 19th a new game engine called Stingray. Okay, it's not that new. Stingray is actually a new name for a game engine Autodesk acquired last year called BitSquid. Stingray will cost developers 30 bucks a month for basic support with discounts for longer commitments and a free option for students. Lindsay Turntine, one of the, one of the innovations here is the pricing. Uh, with the uh, with the alternatives that they are competing against, uh, they they typically don't charge anything to use the the engine, and then you they sort of you get they get a chunk of 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 the uh, of the profits or revenue or whatever when you're selling the game. Uh, those uh, alternatives mostly are Unity and Unreal, the two game engines that I think are most widely used. Do you think this is a good move by Autodesk? Are people going to jump on this? I, this is one of those areas when I have no idea. I think it depends on how good it is and how easy it is to use, right? I mean, if this is the technology that makes life a lot easier and helps game developers build something that, uh, that they otherwise wouldn't be able to generate, then any pricing makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I have really not, no idea. All right. If you're a game developer, let us know whether this sounds like a compelling offering, whether you're ready to switch from Unity or Unreal Send email to tnt at twit.tv and let us know uh, what you think of this, uh, this new offering from Autodesk. Well, the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus pushed Apple to the number one position in China. It was kind of a shocking uh, reality because they were like down near the bottom for a couple of years. They were down in 6, 7, 8 uh, place. Uh, then they shot to the top, but that didn't last. Xiaomi has now regained the top spot in that country and Huawei is number two. So that means Apple is the number three biggest smartphone seller in China. And this is all according to a new report from Canalys. I, you know, I think this is, goes to show that in a country like China, which is so big and so diverse, having that local advantage at the end of the day really, really matters. I mean, those, those two manufacturers can understand the Chinese market in a way that nobody else can. And Apple can make a big splash, but is so much more expensive that it's, I think it's always unless they really change their sales strategy, going to be a little bit flash in the pan for new Apple products in China. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, and of course, these, these companies uh, have come out with uh, new, new products recently that are pretty much as good as an iPhone and about half or less of the price. So, uh, you know, that's, that's a tough thing for Apple, to, even Apple, to compete with. It's a brutal thing for Samsung to compete with in China. So uh, I think this is really the, the natural way things are going to be. I think there was a lot of pent-up demand for big iPhones in China. And when they finally made it available, everybody rushed, wanted one, rushed to get one, and, and that, that rush is over. And now we're settling back into a new normal. So, uh, you know, welcome to third place, Apple. In mergers and acquisitions news, Nokia sold its Here unit, which makes a sophisticated mapping service, to a consortium of German car makers. The consortium includes all the usual suspects, Audi, BMW, and Daimler, which, of course, owns Mercedes. The price was just over $3 billion. You know, it is becoming so important for auto manufacturers to have good software. And yeah. I sort of feel like... This is probably a good thing since this mapping software was famous for being actually really very good and one of the most valuable things that Nokia had in its portfolio. It'll be interesting to see what these manufacturers do with that data since so many of us use our handsets as our nav systems now. And it seems like that's the direction we're going. So is this sale really more about autonomous driving? Be interesting to see. It, it certainly could be. I mean, it certainly could be applied to that. And if you're wondering why Germany... One hint, uh, and I don't know if this is uh, material or not, but one hint is that uh, Nokia, which of course is based in Finland, the HERE division that made this mapping app was based in Berlin, Germany. So 
Uh, it sounds like it was probably put together with German engineers uh, almost entirely. So it's kind of like a German company, a kind of subsidiary of Nokia, if you will. Well, Microsoft has acquired a Texas-based company called Incent Games, which has a gamification product called, wait for it, Fantasy Sales Team. Microsoft said they plan to offer the platform to customers to help them incentivize their sales teams and to new heights and better results. Fantasy Sales Team? It sounds... <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I actually think it's genius. Yeah. I, I sales teams, you know, they're not they're not out there changing the world, right? <laughs> they're out there hawking selling things the world. and selling the world. And it's got I actually think that for most sales teams, having fun at the job and they tend to be really competitive people, um, is is the thing that keeps them at a specific business rather than jumping ship and going to another outfit every year. Um, I think it's really smart. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah, should should be cool. Uh, we'll we'll see uh, we'll see how it goes after Microsoft's been running it uh, for a while. And uh, you know, again, it's cool that they're they're offering it to their partners, not to their own sales staff. I'm sure their own sales staff will use it as well. well all right, we'll see how that goes. Well, uh, we got uh, wrap up coming right up. But first, I want to tell you about Gazelle. As you know, Gazelle is the place to sell your used gadget. And you know why? Because number one, they give you a ton of money for your gadget, and number two super easy. Uh, you just go to their site, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com. And let's say you want to sell your device. Just click on the big bluish green sell button and it'll take you right to a place where you can, you can choose whether it's a smartphone or whatever it is, or whether it's an Android phone, an iPhone, and then you choose the device. So, so if you've got an iPhone 6 plus that you'd like to sell because you, you're tempted by the new Android uh, devices that have just come out, click on that. Go in there and say, okay, if it's, in, if it's broken, if it's good, if it's flawless, just choose one based on what the, what the reality of the phone is. And if you choose flawless, you're going to get a lot of money. The unlocked price is $490, $490 uh, that they'll give you for your used 128 gigabyte Apple iPhone 6. Now, you have to understand one thing about Gazelle. None of the prices are fixed. They're, they're not locked in time. So over time, everything goes down in value. So if you're ever going to sell to Gazelle, and you always should sell your stuff to Gazelle, sell it as soon as you possibly can. And, and a pro tip is that when you have a device that's going to be replaced by a new version or a new uh, model in that line, sell it before they an announce or ship the next version because you'll get a lot more. As soon as the, the new version is out, the value of the old one goes down a little bit. Uh, but no matter what, you always want to sell your devices to Gazelle. It's the best place by far to sell your used gadgets, and it's environmentally friendly, too. So find out what your iPhone's worth. Take a minute and go to gazelle.com to find out. And we thank Gazelle for their support of Tech News Today, and I thank Gazelle for all the money they've given me for all my old devices and how easy they've made it for me. Our TNT fan of the day is Josh Canley, who posted this picture on Twitter, and there she is, Miss Tech News America, right there. Lindsay turn time. I'm on so the wall. flattered. Yes, you, you're you're taking up the wall there, and uh, yeah, it looks very cool. I don't know the details of this. Didn't. Put it's a hard lot of to details. get a good screen grab too, so I really appreciate it that I don't yeah. have my mouth wide open. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're talking. That's what you're here for. <laughs> Show us how you watch or listen to TNT. Just record a video or take a picture of yourself or your setup and post it on Instagram, Google Plus, Twitter, or Facebook. And use the hashtag how I watch TNT so we can find it. Lindsay Turntine, you told me before the show started that you have something that you'd like to tell us all about so that we well, all the, go rushing to check it out. Yeah, the CNET uh, news team, which is sort of a, it's um, the, my partner, Connie Guillermo, the editor in chief of news, runs that team. And they have put together this amazing road trip package and have been traveling all over the world to write very interesting tech stories from remote corners. So Shara Tipkin, who writes about Apple normally for CNET, uh, went to Vietnam and has a lot of really interesting dispatches from there. And we've got a really cool story about um, self-driving cars in a city built in Michigan where self-driving cars talk to each other. It's, it's really good stuff. So CNET.com slash road trip. I heard that Shara Tipkin, when she went to uh, Vietnam, she... Uh, she ended up being wor worshipped as a goddess, and they had to send somebody up the river to to, to get her because she went crazy and was like, uh, "Was that was that? No, that that was that <laughs> was another, that, that was something." I else. think it's a different movie. Oh, okay, different movie. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, good. I'm glad to hear it. Thank goodness. Well, uh, Lindsay Turntine, we will see you next week. Thank you so much for co-anchoring today, and again, we'll see you next week. Thanks, Mike. All right.
You can subscribe to Tech News Today the old-fashioned way via RSS. You can choose another way to subscribe at twit.tv slash TNT or just use your podcast app and subscribe from there. You can also watch us live every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1700 UTC at twit.tv slash live. You can follow us on Twitter at Tech News Today TV. And you can follow me on Twitter as well, Mike Elgin, or at elgin.com, my website. Also, don't miss our other tech news show, Tech News Tonight, at 4 p.m. Pacific every single weeknight. Tonight's interview is with Alex Wilhelm from TechCrunch. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the tech news today. The show is produced by Jason Cleanthes and edited by Anthony Nielsen. My name is Mike Elgin. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow.